Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got an episode of Sniper Sunday, the series where we'll be playing the Scout class, the Sniper class in Battlefield 1, talking about tips and tricks, how to get better. We'll be focusing on different weapons. Today we'll be focusing on the M1903 sniper rifle. This is designed as the longest range sniper rifle in Battlefield 1, and we'll be using the C93 for our sidearm. Now there are three variants of this rifle, and if you pick the M1903 experiment, you're going to be getting a different gun entirely. So this video does not apply to the M1903 Experimental, but the other two variants. And this here is the sniper variant, allowing me to see people really far with my magnified scope. I'm playing on the Oil of Empires Operation with 64 players, which gives me a lot of targets to shoot at at long range, and it also makes it so that I don't really have to worry too much about people flanking up behind me. This is the ideal situation for a sniper, a long corridor with enemies coming from one single direction. It gives you the best chances of surviving, and basically the biggest enemy to a sniper is when somebody sneaks up on you in close quarters. That's where you are the weakest, so picking a game mode and map that can facilitate your playstyle is going to allow you to do better with the class. It's not to say that a sniper can't do well on Conquest, they absolutely can. In fact, I think they can do well on just about every game mode, but you really have to know when to use them and how to play with them, and and operations is just pretty easy to set yourself up in the right situation. Now as for gadgets, I'm running with the spotting flare, which I think is just one of the most useful gadgets in the game. I can't think of running a sniper without the spotting flare. It's so incredibly useful for finding where people are hiding on a point, clearing off a point, or shooting it uh, into an enemy flank coming at you and knowing exactly what rocks people are hiding behind or knowing where they're coming from, or even shooting it at the entrance of a building so that people catch on fire if they try and come through the doorway. It burns for quite a while, so it's a good defensive measure. Now when it comes to the primary weapon, the sniper rifle, which is really one of the most important decisions you make when choosing your loadout, the M1903 is designed for long range because of its sweet spot mechanic. And I go over this in pretty much every sniper video I do, but if this is the first time watching it, you really wanna understand the sweet spot mechanic. As you can see here, I'm getting a few kills where I'm doing 100% damage without getting headshots. And that is the sweet spot right there. You can do 100 body damage at a very specific range. Now that range doesn't go on forever. Once you hit it, it's a window. So the M1903 starts its sweet spot at 100 meters away. So it's a long range rifle. And then that sweet spot ends at 150 meters. So you have 50 meter window of, of distance from you where you can one shot somebody with 100 damage. Now, if you hit them in the arm, it won't one shot them and unfortunately arms do get in the way of your body shots more often than uh, I'd like them to but uh, that's just something to expect so if you think you're at the right sweet spot range but you didn't get a one shot body shot kill it's probably because you hit them uh, in a body part that doesn't give you a 1.0 multiplier. Now as for figuring out distance in this game it's a little bit tricky because the map doesn't really have any tools for doing so and when you're looking at your enemies there aren't really any tools for that either. So one of the easiest ways or one of the only ways really to try and figure out your distance from a target is to use flags. Now when you look at a flag and you zoom in towards it, it'll actually give you the distance in meters you are from that flag. And you can use that to try and gauge how far away you are from enemies, either from just figuring out the general distance and what that looks like in the game, or if there's enemies at a flag, then you can position yourself at the right sweet spot distance from that flag to get the one shot kills. Again, you have a 50 meter window, so 100 meters to 150 meters is that sweet spot. So you don't have to be perfectly accurate, but just to generally have a good idea of what that range looks like will allow you to better set up for the sweet spot. Now, because your damage ramps up to the sweet spot, if you're right outside the sweet spot, you might end up doing 99 damage to somebody if you body shot them, which will let you know that you're very close to the sweet spot. So say if I'm at 95 meters from somebody instead of the 100 meter cutoff, I might end up doing that 99% damage to them. Granted, a lot of people have a little bit of body damage done to them during intense combat anyway, so that might be enough to finish them off regardless. But it's just something to keep in mind if you're thinking like, why am I doing 
99 damage to this guy. Why am I not just doing 100 damage? It's because you're right outside that sweet spot range. Now, right now you can see that a flag is 155 meters away from me. That's all the way back in the castle. So between a flag and about 50 meters closer than that is my sweet spot. As you can imagine, that's a pretty far range and you really have to think about how you're playing to set yourself up for those distances. It's hard to do um, for people who really like the long range sniping, the M1903 will appeal to you. For people who like to be maybe a little bit more aggressive, get more medium range sniping, some of the other sniper rifles will give you sweet spots that you can work with a bit better. Personally, I think that the majority of kills you're gonna get in the game, regardless of your sniper or any other class, is going to be much closer range than 100 to 150 meters. So as much fun as it is to do really long range sniping, I think practicality wise, that uh, some of the other sniper rifles just simply have better sweet spots um, and they'll give you a little bit more versatility. Then again, if you just want to snipe long range, then the M1903 will objectively be the better sniper rifle. Now hitboxes and accuracy is something that I've noticed uh, is a bit different or a bit uh, hard to get used to in this game if you're someone who's used to sniping in previous Battlefield games. In Battlefield 4 you could pretty much snipe somebody anywhere that it looked like it was part of their body and you would get a hit marker for it. In Battlefield 1 there's a lot of soldiers that run around with these big clunky backpacks on um, and if you shoot those backpacks they won't actually give you a hit marker. It's really um, disorienting at times because you think you have just a nice clean easy body shot on someone you take it and you watch your bullet travel through the enemy and not give you a hit marker it's usually because you're hitting the backpack also the kind of wide brimmed helmets that you see on there I don't believe the edge of the helmet will count as a hit marker so if you have an angle on someone where you see the top of their hat and it kind of uh, hits the side of the hat that might also not count as the hit marker. There's a lot of weird little things with the player models in this game um, that can be slightly aggravating if you're used to previous Battlefield games because you think it's not giving you a hit. The other thing that's been one of the more challenging and frankly annoying things to adapt to with Battlefield 1 if you're used to previous Battlefield games is the suppression mechanic, which without question affects the sniper class more than any other class. It, might, it affects the medic class a lot too because you're relying on accurate DMR shots and then when those get inaccurate then uh, it really messes up your gameplay but especially with snipers um, you'll notice that you have a lot of perfectly aimed shots but uh, if you're suppressed those shots can go way off their mark and if you don't understand that it's the suppression mechanic messing with you then you'll just get aggravated you'll blame the game you'll blame the netcode and other things uh, when in actuality it is by design but I think it's kind of by bad design one of the biggest flaws with this game I feel is that there's very little in the way of tutorial systems explaining the basic game mechanics and frankly the basic game mechanics are not that simple or that straightforward They're there's a lot of nuances to uh, spread from guns and stuff like that, suppression mechanics, how moving affects, how aiming down sight uh, is affected by different attachments and whatnot. There's a lot of uh, details to this game that just are not explained within the game itself, even through the tip system. It's pretty limited. So um, aside from like YouTube videos, watching my videos or other people's videos where they explain how these things work, there's just not a lot for the average player to learn in game. And I think that's a pretty big flaw for this game, considering just how complex some of the weapon models or some of the uh, bullet trajectory models can be. Not being able to understand them even when they're designed to be really complex and interesting doesn't allow players to take advantage of that or make strategic decisions. We're just picking guns, kind of looking at basic stuff like, oh, okay, this one does a lot of damage or it's got a high mark on the damage indicator in the menu system and that's about it. Not giving players the tools or the information that they need to make a good or strategic decision is not creating a smart or intelligent game. It's creating a game that has the potential for that, but is mostly populated by people who don't understand it. And so um, I think Battlefield could really, really benefit from a better tutorial system and a better explanation system of how just the nuanced firefight mechanics work. And like I said before, it's not quite as big of a deal if you're playing the assault class in close quarters with a shotgun or a really powerful SMG, but when you're playing the sniper class or the medic class, a class that's affected more by these nuanced mechanics, it's really important to understand them and understand 
understand why your shots are missing uh, a lot of the time, even though you think you're aiming perfectly. Now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about my sidearm, the C93. It's an interesting little pistol, does 26 max damage, so it's a four shot kill. Um, in close-ish quarters, it's got a decent damage drop off actually, so uh, you can get your range out a little bit further with it. I try and mix up my pistols a bit because uh, I'm just so in love with the 1911. I don't see much reason to use other handguns aside from the point of just exploring them and trying to figure out if there's any benefits to them. The C93 is a fun little sidearm. Uh, it's not bad by any means. It's no M1911, but uh, it's got a decent little rate of fire and can do some good damage at range. It's got one extra bullet than the 1911, a slightly higher rate of fire, but a lower damage per shot. So uh, if you're just looking for something that you could spam a little bit more and is a universal weapon that you can take between classes so you can get really comfortable with one specific pistol, then the C93 certainly fits that bill. Anyway, we're finishing up this round here. I absolutely dominated with the sniper rifle, though it was mostly because of hitting headshots, especially on this second map here, Suez. I wasn't able to take advantage of the sweet spot nearly as much, especially at the later flag. So you might want to consider switching out your sniper rifle for something with a better close range sweet spot. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.